I love the countdown timer. <laughs> that I was wish it was. I wish it was like Craig though, and it was like five, four. <laughs> it just got creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, before we get started, if you guys want to be interviewed on the podcast, jump over to cataclysmicgamers.com. Uh, scroll down and you'll find the jank deck list submission. Submit your deck and we'll check it out with you. Talk about it. Uh, so on tonight's episode, we've got Digi Guy uh, from Ooh. the TCG Jungle. Go check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's on TikTok, too. Uh, welcome, did you go? Thank you, thank you. And if you could, don't check me out on TikTok. I'm the laziest content creator. Hey, I'm right there with you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But Dude, it works. It does. Shout out to CapCut. Yes. Nope. The real MVPs. <laughs> yeah. I remember my wife asked me, like, how'd you edit this? And I was like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't you fear. We got it down pat. Yeah. I know a guy. I hired somebody. All right, so let me pull up your deck list here. I didn't even. That, I was going to say when you said update your, or upload your jank, and I was like, I updated Melga. <laughs> hey, it's. I mean, it's it's a deck list. Uh, so, uh, before we jump into the deck list, um, let's see here. Uh, so give us a short introduction in your history with TCGs. Uh, history with TCGs, there, it's wild I think about this now. I don't have one. Um, I was, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! like as a kid, and I think I gave that up after Yu-Gi-Oh! got a little too complicated for children. Uh, and then I didn't play TCGs. I didn't play anything. But what happened was my wife wanted to get back into first-gen Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, and so we went to a card store, and... I was looking at the Yu-Gi-Oh! like starters, and I'm like, man, do you have anything like from like Gen 1, like Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, yada yada? And just it just so happened, I looked over and I saw Matt Ishida on a starter deck, and I was like, what's that? He was like, this, the Digimon TCG, and they were in Double Diamond at the time. And uh, I was like, N you don't understand, sir. <laughs> I was like, I don't have a <laughs> TCG history. I've loved Digimon. I faked being sick to stay home from school when Digimon premiered. I, I've just always loved Digimon. And then the TCG came back. It's like not just playing the game, but like collecting the game. Uh, and then for a while, I didn't play Digimon. I had the cards, but I was really, I don't want to say big. I was never like big. I was moderately big on whatnot. And I would go live every Thursday, and I would sell packs and sell singles. And then finally, uh, he's in my Discord. He's the co-founder of TCG Jungle, Mr. Wild. He was like, hey, we should play this game. And, yeah, and that, was, that was the release of Devil Diamond. And, and ever since then, TCGs have like come back into my life. So I play a lot of Digimon, obviously. It's my favorite game. It's my favorite uh, IP. Uh, I just got into Star Wars. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, and then I'm trying to dive into Pokemon. And I, I dive into everything, mostly Bandai, though. I try to stick to Bandai, you know, One Piece. Um, I didn't get into BSS. And then, uh, like we were just saying before you, the, the, the countdown, uh, I did enjoy Union Arena. But as far as, like, history of TCGs, I don't have one. <laughs> I just love Digimon, and I saw starter decks, and I was like, I need this. So, <laughs> Digimon, the, the cardboard crack consumed you. Oh, absolutely. And it, even if I'd never found out about the card game, I was still, what, Double Diamond drop five years, maybe? So I got in the game at, like, 25, I'm 30 now. I was still, like, watching the Digimon show on Hulu, and, like, every, my wife would get so mad. She'd be like, we're watching the Digimon movie again. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but what if Bormon dies differently this time? <laughs> so, they, it was definitely cardboard crack, but it was um, it, it's also really cool to like open packs and like I love Melga, there he is on the screen. So it's cool to like see Melga cards and be like, man, I loved this dude when I was a kid. And now you just get to sling the cardboard all the time. Yeah, and again, it's not jank, but it's Melga and uh. 
I've always had a weird fascination with Matt Ishida. My real name is Matt. Uh, Matt Ishida was a protective older brother. I'm the oldest brother of eight siblings. So it's like, it just fits. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's some you... deep backstory right there for you. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so a, That's a whole locals right there. <laughs> Dude, I try. I try. I'm My brothers, I, I joke about this all the time. My brothers and sisters are the unnerdiest people like ever. I don't know. What oh, no. My parents had me and like, they put all their cool into me and then they just like parted it out for my brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's how it goes. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just got all the best genes. That's just, yeah, it is. it's nuts. Cause like I talked to my brothers and he's all, you know, we, we all love like sports and stuff. But like my brother can tell you stats from a football game four years ago, and he'll like try to tell me about that stuff. I'm just like, yeah, I know, but did you know that Grandis topped a local? This is crazy. Like, I don't care what Peyton Manning did in his day. <laughs> All right, we're talking about Digimon. Right now. <laughs> did you know? Um, well, so of course your favorite Digimon is, of course, the Guru line. Yeah, uh, Guru is my like all time favorite, but the line itself is just awesome. It was definitely one of my favorites whenever a one started. I think I, I, I related with Matt too, because of the big brother thing. It, so it, I, I think Oh one, especially, uh, you related more to like the characters of Digimon more so than just the one Ash. But, like, yes. You were 15 and kicked out. Like I can't, there's nothing we don't share that my mom would never kick me out at 10 years old to go chase stray dogs <laughs> <laughs> at least matt was like abducted somehow he was a you know his little brother like i get that i'm a big brother i, I agree with that with 100 percent digimon and it's grown with us like just from the new mm -hmm. adventure 02 movie um there was a lot of kids there and i'm sitting there as a as a dad now and spoiler alert um watching you know, a young child be neglected. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm like crying. I'm a, I'm a 38 year old man. I'm like just tears running down my eyes. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. It, uh, even I'm going to say spoiler warning, but if you haven't seen last evolution, <laughs> Kazuna, like this, then oh, it's your yeah. fault. But yeah. like the, the end of that, they, you, we lost Agumon and Gabumon and my wife couldn't under, and I was bawling, like bawling <laughs> and my wife couldn't understand. I was like, you have oh. to, like from, this young age to 30, I've always, yeah. in a weird way, you know, I'm just saying, in a weird way, I've always had Gabumon and Agumon. And they, and it was beautifully done. A lot of people are mad about it. It was beautifully done. They're gone now. And that's because Matt and Ty got older. And that's what happens is I was a kid. I was introduced to Gabumon. Now I'm old. And that's like Digimon's way of saying, hey, it's okay to let go. Like, you're older now. And it's like, oh, you got me, dude. Oh. <laughs> but definitely that, a little bit more relatable. That was a tearjerker. I did cry. My wife's like, why are you crying? I'm like, you don't understand. I had to call my brother. I was like, give me a sad football fact so my wife doesn't think I'm a sissy. All right. So uh, what uh, play style do you typically lean towards? I know the Guru lines your, your baby, but whenever yeah. you're looking at other decks, is there a certain play style that you – lean towards yeah i'm super i don't like it's weird i'm not sure if you guys will understand this or if anyone will i like to play a smart aggressive so like i like black war he's one of my favorite uh deck wise because he's he is aggressive but he's smart i also like the new red hybrid uh it, it is a I, I call it a brain dead deck i don't think it is i'm gonna keep calling it that though to piss people off um but like Rookie Rush, I don't like Rookie Rush, I don't like Armor Rush, but I love aggressive decks that once you have a stack, that could be the game. I don't even, this this deck list, this isn't even my play style. Like, I just built it because it's Melga. <laughs> and this will be the deck I, I play test for Gen Con and take to, you know, regionals throughout the season. But uh, play style wise, yeah, I'm aggressive but smart. I think most people would probably label that as kind of mid-range 
yeah kind of keeping control of the game but you still got that i'm gonna slap your face off well i actually um speak in mid-range i built uh nightmares his gamma deck he put in your guys's discord i have that built because he said he's like it's mid-range you can swing with your fours and flat and i was like that sounds pretty cool i'm gonna go with that Listen, that has potential to be a it this is what hurts that deck is where there's so much going on, but it's super adaptive as well, which is what makes it fun. But it's like you have purple that you kinda want to die to go into your trash, and then you have to get a serious mon or an Arcturus Mon. It there's the deck has so much going on <laughs> that um um it's tough. I've only gotten to play it a couple times. Uh, unfortunately, the matchups going into those playtesting matches were pretty bad. I was going against bunnies in one of them. And then I think I was playing in a proxy deck against the new, what is going to be the new Masty. But I liked it. Again, I like the fact that I, I it's not a brain dead aggressive swing, 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 swing. It's, let me think about. Like if if you have uh tapped Pokemon or tapped Digimon, do I swing at that tapped Digimon or do I swing at security? I like making those decisions. It but is if definitely you're the Rust Tyranimon player, you swing at that tapped Digimon and then trash security, so trash all the security. <laughs> Ew gross. <laughs> but I like that about like I said, my playstyle uh going into like Black War. I like having the protection to where like I'm just gonna swing at security and if I hit the 15 DP quartz for merciful mode. Okay. Well, that's fine. Like, I don't care. And then I'll reboot. And when I unsuspend, I'm trashing a security anyways. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, so is there a certain color that you lean towards play wise? Like, yeah. I like to say I'm a blue player. Uh, blue hybrids where I started. Uh, it was the first deck I ever built. And it was the first deck I ever took to a competitive uh, not just the locals. It was the first I went to, or I played in the um, online regional, and I played blue hybrid. So I like to go blue. I think more so. I think I'm maturing, and I think like red's starting to grow on me. So I definitely that's, like red. That's the opposite of maturing. <laughs> <laughs> you hush. You hush. Silence. You. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm starting to go a little red. Uh. I thoroughly, I did do it like a couple uh, months of Bloom Lord, and I liked that. But I think overall, like reds, that's the color I lean towards. If I'm going to build anything, it'll probably be red. So is there a color that you uh, don't ever want to play or try to stay away from? Yeah, if you have looked me up on TikTok, and you've seen the 30 plus TikToks I've made, I won't touch yellow. I won't ever do it. I won't. It's gross. Uh, <laughs> I used to say that about purple, but I built Luga. I, I thoroughly enjoy Luga, but I can't see me playing a yellow deck. And hot take, uh, I'm sure you guys have your own. I think recovery should be no more than five. Like, at no point should you have more than five security. It got pretty wild when I was playing against Wholehearted, and especially when Mikey was playing against him. They both had, like, Non security at one point, I think. I, I don't. So, I don't think that's a hot take. I mean, it it is crazy, especially with how. Um, so security is different than playing from your trash. You know how purple, mm -hmm. everyone's like, "Oh, your trash is like another hand," but when it's your shields is another hand, and you know, pat them on. It's. I can see your take not being a hot take, in my opinion, because it gets. <laughs> It gets rough. Yeah, it it got to a point, and uh, we 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 ran a tournament, just a Discord tournament, local tournament. We had vaccine versus vaccine mirror match, and at some point during that game, I hopped in as you know the host, and I was like, "Listen, whoever makes it to ten security wins." And like, both players were like, I, I was kind of like half joking, but like both players got like upset ish with me uh the one being a good friend of mine so he wasn't too upset but it's like dude, we're going on 45 minutes every mm -hmm. other game has ended we're waiting on you two and like they were both undefeated and it's like i'm looking we started this tournament at 
you know, six o'clock. It's going on eleven, and we don't know who's undefeated or not because we can't get you guys to end the game. Um, I, I understand why people like yellow, and I get that security, uh, the minus security that is in the game now, and uh, recovery is good, but they. I do believe Bandai's got a cap it somewhere. <laughs> like, hey, no, even if it's not no more than five, like you can't have no more than eight. Because then people, a lot of people are like, oh, Red Hybrid just swings eight checks on. Well, it has to, <laughs> because you've got nineteen security. Yeah, I mean, you got at one point, me and Wholehearted, I think, had to combine. Keep going. I think we combined one game for almost twenty-two security. Between the two of us. 22. And I can see the point of if you're in the game, if you're one of the players, that's probably really, really fun. And you're using your brain and you're thinking and that's good for you. But like, again, during this tournament, if you've got people waiting on you and it's like, come on. (laughs) Like EX06, by the time we go to Gen Con, uh, EX06 will be here. And I've already told like all my teammates, I'm going zero and three. Because it's, it's going to be Masty and Yellow Armor Vaccine at that point. It's like I, I can't sit like I can't sit here that long knowing all this stuff is going on around me. Oh three drop baby. <laughs> my buddy he made a uh, my buddy made the it's always sunny you know episode end and it's like the gang does this so he made a little thing for us says the gang goes zero and three at Gen Con. <laughs> yeah, yes. like, hell yeah. So. Uh, at this point with BT15, how do you feel about the direction of the game and with the upcoming merge next year? Do you think it's going in the right direction? Yeah, I believe so. I think the merge is cool. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of upset, a little upset with it. Uh, I think it brings a whole new like breath of fresh air to the game. There's always been that uh, argument online uh net decking versus building your own deck. And that kind of takes away from the net decking thing. But yes. not really, like because now you know if you go to locals and you top, people can't look at you and then be like, Where'd you get that list? Don't worry about it. I built it. You know I, I think the merge is really, really good. And also I think it's gonna be good in the future for uh nationals and worlds because you can so like this list, I net deck, I net deck this. This is not my original list. I net deck this. I can't do any content on this without giving the original person credit. And I don't know the original person. This was a Twitter post I saw. I was like, I'm just gonna build this because I'm lazy. With the merge, it gives kind of you as the player a bit more freedom. You know, to swap out the EX01 Gabu. Get rid of those. It's your own build. And I think that's going to bring more content to the game with people doing that because they're going to give off their deck profile and then be like, hey, if this doesn't work for you, here's eight cards that maybe you can throw into the deck somewhere that might work for you. Uh, So with the merge, I think it's awesome. And like I said, Worlds is going to be crazy just because now we're sharing a meta. Japan hasn't had it for four months longer than we have, Uh, even though, you know, America won Worlds. Uh, and with BT15, I'm always hyped for a new set. I, I, I don't get the, uh, I don't get people that are, oh, I'm not buying it because it's trash. I'm buying it because it's Digimon and it's cardboard and I need it. So I'm always excited for any new set. So let's jump into this list. I, I also see, uh, some shatter full on those sleeves. Yeah, that is, a. Uh... That is actually there they go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shatterfoil is one Good of the best patterns in time. Literally, Shatterfoil you, sold out will, so fast. I'm glad I bought it. Uh, yeah. I played in your guys' mental health tournament a while ago. And I, I think you guys were giving sleeves away, but I, I didn't win you know, the giveaway. But I was like, well, I need to. I need some of those. Those look cool. So I bought just the mat, 
In fact, they're on one of these decks right now. I bought the matte and the holographics. And then for the Melga, those are two sleeved, double sleeved, uh, with the penny sleeves that are uh, Shatterpoint or Stars, one of the two. But the deck's behind me. I'm not, not going to get it. But So I, I saw these, and then I joined the Discord, I think like a day before the tournament or, or a week before the tournament. And then you guys started posting more and more about Prismatic Defenders. And I was like, let me go ahead and hop on that trend. Yeah, they're great. Love those guys. And they're from Cleveland. And I'm 40 minutes from Cleveland. So I was like... Oh, they're probably in some local shops around you then. I I go to the one local shop for cards. Uh, So about five minutes down the road from me is a comic book shop where I go. And sometimes they have cards, sometimes they don't. But I go there for comics. And then 20 minutes... That away is a actual card shop. They do not carry those, but I can always ask the guy. Hey, you set them up. Yeah, cause I'm no hate to no one, but like Dragon Shields are boring. Oh, their their quality controls just went out the door. The last two packs that I've bought, they've been ripped up top, and I'm not gonna trash on Dragon Shield anymore. Why not? Uh, so I I don't know anything about Melga. So let's. Well, Run us through this list real quick. So let me. I'm going to use my pointer. So you have to run the one ofs. So I'll get that out of the way. The Gabu X and the Guru X. They they shouldn't have been banned. Bring back my boy. Basically everything level three and four is just a draw, and then when you draw, you gain memory and get one thousand. And the whole deck is based around swinging and then restanding. And swinging and restanding and swing and you in a turn if you're uh let's see if you're at your guru X swing he'll restand go into your where guru swing he'll restand you go and that was for two memory if you don't have the mat if you do have the mat it's for one memory go into your excuse me guru X restand swing. And then go into your Melga, swing, restand, and at the end of turn, Melga restands, and he's a blocker. Also, I can't remember which Melga it is, but if your opponent attempts to even come back, they lose four memory. So, like, it's just rude. It's just a rude deck. And then the Sorais are in there just because I'm an a-hole, and please hit that in security. That's hilarious to me, especially with oh. the ace cards and overflow. I love Sora. That's... I've made multiple uh the one ace card I think is the best ace card, Zudo Ace. Multiple people will Zudo trash uh what is it, two of my uh Digivolutions and then swing and hit a Sora and I'm like, Payback's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, and like I say, it runs the same as the old uh, Melga. The only problem I have with this deck list is the Sorais. The two Sorai are just not enough removal. Um, and your Melga is not as protected as like Black War or the War Gray deck. Um, he, he can easily be taken off board. But luckily, with you've got the two mats. Um, and all that draw power, you can probably build another stack quite easy. It's just annoying when you do inevitably get hit by the Brick Goblin. Yes. And I know a lot of people run the Omni X, but I feel like if I'm already at Omni, I should have game. It's the one that stands out that I, I'm not even sure what it is, is the Foxfire. What's... Oh, the Fox? Foxfire is actually a good card that I run in... Uh... Gabu, and what it does is it's um, if you have a Gurumon or Gabumon in its name, uh, one of your opponents level four, you get to return Wait, one of your opponents level second. four lower Digimon to the hand. And um, if you have a Gabumon or Gurumon in its name, return one of your opponents Digimon with the lowest level to the hand instead. Ooh. Yeah. yeah I like that. How much yeah. memory does that cost? Because that sounds pretty good. Four. It's, it's four, four memory. Cost. And oh. but it's like it's it's still not it's it's one of your fastest removals. And um if you hit it in security, you get to activate the main effect, which is nice. So 
And when are you not going to have a Gabumon or Garurumon in name? Which, that makes it even better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the good thing, too, is even for the four memory, you almost don't mind. Because the deck is somewhat like memory gain. I mean... The gob all the gobblies are good because you're drawing one, which means you get to gain one draw or gain one plus one thousand to your stack. The gobby from EXO one I think is the most slept on card in any blue deck. Um a lot of people were calling me weird for playing it in all fours. But you get to grab a tamer. Yep. So I mean I only run the two blue. Uh eventually after this deck has ran its course, it'll be Gobby Bond. And then I'll have a lot more tamers, hey, obviously. gobbon has been doing, putting in some work here in the last couple of regionals. I uh, I wasn't going to build it, um, and I hate... Am I allowed to shout out other content creators? Go for it. Well, yeah. So, yeah, so Primitive Kage is one of my favorites. <laughs> yep. And he's just been running his locals with Gabubon, and I'm like, don't do this to me. Listen. Listen uh, Dan Vang, I've watched his uh, interview, or his deck list today. And he was talking about how he played against a couple different Gabubon decks, and they're putting in some work at regionals. Yeah, and that is that's coming up. Like Gabubon supports coming up here. I can't remember when that comes out. Like BT BT eighteen or something. I think there is one card that I want to see. So I we're getting a new Gabubon. Yeah, there there's an ace coming for it. Oh yeah, yeah, it. okay, it's yeah. The ace. yeah, it's the ace. Okay, seventeen BT seventeen. I think so. So this is my question, and you being a Gabu Bond Gabu Bond player, um, a lot of people tried. Well, not a lot of people. The Wolf of Friendship from BT fifteen, um. And it's card effect. It's an option card. It's like while you have a tamer with Matt Ishida in its name, you can ignore the color requirements and you place one Garumon and one Ware Garumon from your trash as one of your Gabumon's bottom Digivolution cards and they can Digivolve into a metal Garumon in your hand, ignoring its Digivolution requirements and without paying the cost. I could probably tech that in there. I think when I first read that card, in my head, I didn't run enough Matt Ishida's. Um, That's true. Because it, it's the the three cost mat, or sorry, the four cost match or memory setter. I like to get him out early, but I don't see him all the time, and I only run four tamers. <sighs> so you're gonna you're more than likely gonna build your stack before you have either Matt out. I was wondering if we'll see it more with Gabu Bond because it's Matt Ishida in name. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of us play the Matt and is it Sora, the blue red tamer. And then yeah. of course you have all the normal. So you run a lot more mats. Like I think in my Gabu Bond yeah. deck, I run like nine mats <laughs> between the new yeah. blue. So, I mean, maybe we'll see that more in Gabu Bond. I could definitely take out... I don't think I need the X antibody. Uh, I think that card's kind of ran its course. Uh, I like it too. I could definitely tech in... Uh, excuse me, two of the starter deck mats. But... It, I've been having so much fun. Like, this is a deck list. Again, I saw off Twitter. It threw together. Um, and I only post it to your guys' website because uh, I just wanted to get interviewed. Hey. Ego in me. Uh, no, I'm just, hey. I'm just joking. Um, but uh, it's because around the time I built this, a couple other decks just popped in my head, uh, and then bunnies dropped, and I was like, man, I gotta play test a bunch of fun decks before I even get into like a competitive mindset. And I knew I was taking off um the first couple months of 2024 from Digimon, so I feel like once I play test this a bit more. It'll look a lot different, I think. Um, the only problem with this playtesting this and then switching out cards is they are devil sleeved, and uh, the penny sleeves from Prismatic Defenders are snug. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> they are snug. It is kind of a handful to get those uh, cards out of there. 
I always uh well I don't use the the inners anymore. I just use the matte ones, but mm -hmm. I always have a stack of them and then I just oh these are my playtest cards. Let me just swap this out. That's what I'm gonna start doing. Is I'm gonna start putting play like I would grab. I have a bucket of Melga cards that, as time has gone on since the deck first dropped, that I've just changed out. I just need to sleeve all those, and then they'll be good. And then I can yep. just swap them as I go. All right, so there's one other thing we were going to talk about tonight, and since you're on here, we, we can get your insights on it as well. Let me swap this screen over here. I love how we're all vaping. <laughs> Besides <Dude>. Tiny. <laughs> yeah, I, he could I be. We don't it. know. <laughs> I hate it. I switched recently, nothing to do with cards. I switched recently to the Zins, but, like, I feel so weird, like. You, you put yeah. your fat up for Nicky, brother? <laughs> My wife laughs at me every time. <laughs> yeah. And that was another thing, dude. You get on TikTok and it's just like a bunch, and not, not like young, like underage, but it's like a bunch of like young kids, like talking about upper deckies. And I'm just like, yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> They're so much cooler than me. I don't deserve this. All right. So I, I made this cool little presentation today, threw it together. Uh, we wanted to talk about the top decks of BT15. And here we've got all the, the top contenders. It's very diverse meta, and there's been a lot of complaints from people on the Facebook group. And there's people that love it, like us. But there's a lot of people that don't like such a diverse meta because they can't play. They feel like they can't play whatever they want to because they got to worry about this and this, and you don't know how to play against this. So we kind of want to just talk about the counters to each of these decks. And the certain counter cards that you can play in decks. Uh, do we want? Do we want to run down the list? Yeah, because well, some people may not. Know, well, some people may not know. So uh, we'll start right there with Davis. Um, so we've got Davis, and then we'll go right. We got Mirage Galga. We got Leviathan. We got Yellow Vaccine. Security Control. I'm assuming is that one. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Lugermon. Red Hybrid, uh, Metal Gar, or Rapid, but and then we got Marcus. Not Sean no, Gray Marcus Mon. is... Marcus. Well, the, yeah. there's two different variants of this Marcus that you can run. You can run the, the Sean Gray, or you can go into the Yellow Vaccine, or the Yellow Hybrid Marcus deck that's been popping up. Yeah. I was assuming that... Yeah. Uh, and then we got Numamon, who's been, he's now had two regional tops, so old boogers and bears is going to be popping around everywhere. Fun fun fact, he's still only around 25%, so people are bringing him. It's just not like Alpha Mon tier or Black War Grey tier. We're not at that 60 or 70%. So, some of the counter cards you got. Ding! I'm lagging a little bit, guys, so sorry if I talk over you sometimes. <laughs> it's all good. So, prevent and play by effect. Uh, and there's actually... I think it's this one. There's another page for this. Or maybe it's later. Uh, so, Gatsumon, Pillowmon, and Pogumon, uh All turns, players can't play Digimon by effects. Uh, so, this is going to help counter against what from our meta list here uh Numamon. does it yeah doesn't your davis play by effect in the Ye breeding yep mm -hmm. and then fun fact uh i think i asked this in your guys's discord that does take effect even though it's in breeding yes because there's a lot of people that like no you can't touch breeding area i was like well, it says by effect yep so the the distinction about that is that the effect that plays the Digimon is not from the breeding area. It's from mm. the play area. And this prevents that effect. From taking, okay. Yeah. And since the effect activated from the play area instead of the breeding area, it is not safe. Yeah, so taking out Davis and Numamons, all those fun little bi uh, This would stop Aces, too. 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. any kind of ace play is kind of... No, because ace is a digivolve, but it's not a play. This just stops you from playing by effect. Blast digivolve is not a play, it's a digivolve. Yeah, it's technically counter, the counter step. But if, because we do have cards that do, aces that do play things by effect, it would stop that, so... And also, I know it wasn't on the list. Uh, I'm decently sure these all stop uh, later in later sets when more cards have Fortitude. This stops Fortitude. Yes. Uh, this will also help against the Leviathan's chomp chomping. Yep. Whenever he tries to come back from the trash, you can tell him no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it also stops the effect that they use in order to force play a Digimon on your side of the field so that they can get their effects. Oh yeah. I always forgot Pokemon said all those cards say players can't. I always thought it was yeah. like opponents I, can't. I was testing uh Rust Torano and with the bunnies you get a lot of uh free play stuff, but you got can't stop yourself from playing your own cards. So it's definitely one of those hey, it's all turns and all players, not just your opponent. Unlike these guys yep. who prevent memory gain for your opponent. I played against Beals last night, and Terrier Mon came in clutch. <laughs> yes. That checks out. <laughs> yes. Yep. So, these cards all uh, stop, your, stop your opponent from gaining memory, except by their tamer effects. Uh, so, uh, definitely Mirage. Mm-hmm. Um, what else we got that's gaining memory right now? Well, you've got Mirage, you've got, um, well, any kind of Marcus, if they're running the Agus that gain a memory, you know, just for being on the board. Um, You've got uh, some things in, uh, not Red Hybrid. Does that Ukomon also gain memory, or is that just Louie? No, Ukomon is a raise one, gain one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so you can stop the Ukomon from gaining memory. Numamon doesn't Numamon have a one of got, his like, platinum Numamon has an yeah. odd play to gain two, so you can stop that. And then if you run the Uko in Nume, so then you're stopping yes two aspects of that game. This will also be great in future decks when we and get the new trainers. Of... Mm-hmm. Also stops from popping those memory boosts. It's so weird. You don't see many of those since the training cards came out. <sighs> Training just it's... speeds up a deck so much more than because we have so many searchers now. You know, used to we had the issue that a lot of decks didn't have enough hard play rookies to search. Now, a training boost not only searches for any two cards of your color, pretty much, it helps with your next Digivolution. So it searches a little bit, but helps keep your turn so i think the benefit there is greater than a memory boost in most decks yeah it really depends on the deck what your what your goals are but the trainings are definitely uh seeing a lot more play there was one list i was scrolling through today that had uh it was like three memory boost and three trainings so they were just digging yeah i think i run in the Melga, I think I run two and two. I feel like that's a pretty good area. I was trying the two and two in my Rust Torino build, and I, well, I was playing the uh, double Typhoon, so, mm-hmm. uh, and I like the Typhoon way better because playing out those Terrier Mons for free. I'm decently nuts. sure when I built that, the only reason I put the memory boost is from the uh, the O2 movie art. With uh Davis and Vimon, and I was like, these have to be in there somewhere. Well, wait, you're doing the cute little fist bump. This is this is what you need to get. Then I think I've got two more lying around. If you like that, you need to get these bad boys for it. It's got the Gawumon on it. Oh uh, yeah, that's what you need to get. Bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear her writing up those divorce papers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we got prevent cost reduction and there's two different versions of the cost reduction which i noticed today while i was making this slide so um 
Cute Mon, Gaios Mon, and Sioka Mon. Uh, opponent's turn, your opponent can't reduce Digivolution costs. Uh, and then there is the Sakmon, Chikurimon, and Solar, who affect all turns players can't. Reduce play costs. Yeah. Haha, ha, training boost. So can't reduce play costs. <laughs> Exactly. Training boost shuts down up my poor boy Taga. So the shut down uh not really shut it down. The vaccine from digivolving from security. Isn't that no, a reduced be- cost? No, because that uh, so it doesn't reduce the digivolution cost. It's you can digivolve without paying the cost. Oh the way it's the way it's worded it makes it ignore it. Ignore the effect basically. No, you're fueling Digi Guys fire. That yellow's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Adding to the flame. For for the same reason, those cards don't affect Blast Digivolution too, because Blast Digivolution doesn't reduce the cost. It's you Digivolve without paying the cost. Well, I can't be mad at Blast Digivolution, but I can still hate yellow. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Valid point, good sir. Valid point. <laughs> It's getting my whole 2024 is like, who are you voting for this year? I'm like, whoever stops that color. We're going to ban yellow where you're never allowed to play it again. Yeah. All right. Next up, yellow. we've got. Yellow oh, go is ahead. the Jabberwock, and this man is looking for a Vorpal sword. <laughs> <laughs> now, these techs, I All think. Right, now we got some level seven techs yes. that you can play. I think these are the actual big hitters that hurt. Hang on, I guess. <sighs> That's these. Um, God bless you. I think these are game changers on both sides for you being aggressive and for you stopping your opponent. They're massive, massive game changers in any deck you can run them in. Yeah. So, Merciful Mode, uh, you're putting the cards back in their deck. So, you're getting rid of that Leviathan, any kind of purple deck. And on deletion effects. Because that card states they don't even get to go to your trash. They go to the bottom. So it's like if you was to delete a body on board and they're like, oh, no, I'm putting it. Nope, you're not putting it in your trash. I'm going to pick those cards and put them at the bottom of your deck. So you technically don't even have a chance to respond for your on deletion effects. So it's nasty. Kinda, if you're fast enough to get Merciful Mode out there, you could potentially stop Red Hybrid, too. Yep. Uh, You're putting those Agoonies and um, the other Greymon, Burning Greymon, at the... I think what makes that deck so quick is that you want to kill your guys to do that warp into the six. So if I can get to seven before you put those back at the bottom of your deck, I'm safe for at least another turn. Yeah, for sure. Any, like, you know, being able to warp off of your tamer into your burning gray or your, uh, your gray mon, it, it helps a lot. That's a very, a very good tech card. It was good when Beelzemon was very popular. And I wish I would have known how it worked more at regionals the first time I played. Now understanding the card, it, it hurts Beelzemon quite a bit. Well, like, like I said, I played, I played bunnies against Beals last night, and I tech two merciful. Or sorry, I tech a merciful mode and a quartz into bunnies, and I merciful moded last night, and it, I, I still lost, but I mean, it saved me a couple turns. Oh yeah, it's just bad at cost six, and then at least for bunnies, you're going off your ace of the overflow. It's like, <sighs> that is true, but maybe if then we go the wait. Fun fun fact on that deck. Maybe if you had the new uh, starter deck from the Double Typhoon, the new uh, Tamer. Uh, why, is it, why did my mind go blank? Rapid Mons Tamer. Henry or Wills. Yeah, Henry. So if you use the new Henry, if you had him out and you had a uh, Terrier Mon in your hand, you could uh, do the whole play where you slot a Rapid Mon and a Gargon, which a lot of people aren't running Cargo. But you could use that to go ahead and go back into another uh, Mega Gargamon. 
So when you guys release this episode, tag Tomo. Because Tomo was like, why are you running that, Henry? <laughs> I, hey. I was like, don't you worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> it It is very, uh, like, most people are running the Rapid Mon build of that deck. But if you run the stack version where you're basing more off your Mega Gargamons, it's actually a very solid card. That's all I have to say about that. And then we got we got Quartzmon, just locking down your opponent's tamers and Digimon. No one suspending for you. Double Quartz. Trash I hate security. that card. No, I'm not like Quartz. <sighs> I used to hate it, but now that I know how to play around it somewhat, mm-hmm. it's not as bad as it... It's still tough. It's still tough. But, like, for instance, like, uh, playing with bunnies, it's kind of easy to get around it. If you can Rapid Mon into it, you're actually minus... You can almost get it to where you can actually swing into the courts and kill it. You know, and save your whole board, or like, because when we had the quartz lock, which happens quite often if both players are doing that, you're just hoping to find the way <laughs> that you can be like, all right, if I can just get this rapid one out, push him up, you know, counter into that, I can get rid of it. So it's not as tough as it once was. Once you learn how to play around it. No, well, I think I hated it because. I only hated it when it first came out and it was new. It was the first of its kind, stun everything. Yeah. Hunters was going into it too quick. Yes. I love Quartzmon now. Uh, we got Death X, which is just your opponent swarming that board. Punish them. This is very catastrophic. Play that for free. The D Digivolve hurts so many decks. So many decks. It's. That that card, like I said, is a game changer. If you're hitting any of these level, if you're able to get to any of these level sevens, if the game has lasted that long, maybe not so much merciful mode, but these last three, you're you're probably going to win. I think Death X is one of those cards that um, I don't know the proper term for it, but anytime you play against anyone playing those two colors, you're just kind of waiting on when that card's coming out. Yeah. Uh, especially la- not so much this format, but last format, it was such a wide board format that you had to be prepared. As, um, just to when you're playing the Commander Mon or the Digi Police, you had to know that was coming from somewhere. So it's just one of those cards that kind of puts that. And I don't want to say fear, but it puts that thought in the back of your head, and I think that's what's made it so tough, even up till now. This next and card we got Sean Gray. Ruin mode. There's a reason that card is still like sixty bucks. That card is just <laughs> too. I won't say it's too good, but man, seeing that, I just want to go ahead and scoop most of the time. It's like ten thousand blanket DP reduction, recovery one. Mm-hmm. Ugh. That's a reason to make you hate yellow right there. That card right there is a reason to make you just <laughs> despise yellow, period. And it being, oh, God, it being a vaccine. Ugh. <laughs> it It is. It's definitely an evil card. Uh, and. Nothing against the people that play Ruin Mode, but I make them explain it every time they play it. <laughs> I know what it does. I, I just <laughs> it annoys me so much that I'm just like, what? What's that card do? And then I still try to play stuff. I'm like, you can't play stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. Blanket effects are just so controlly, like Venus Mon. Um, that it's just like, oh, if it comes on the field, guess what? It dies. It's like you hard play that. It dies. You can't drop a rookie. It will die. <laughs> like, and if it doesn't die now, even... those blanket those blanket effects are part of the reason. Those blanket effects are part of the reason that uh, Numa Mon can thrive because a couple of the Monzi Mons have the blanket security minus and blanket DP minus. Mm-hmm. You made tier one. <laughs> yeah. 
tier one, brother. <laughs> so Death X is a really the only one that's splashable in any deck, just because yeah. of the cost reduction. But the other ones, if you're playing any of these colors that did you evolve into this level seven, you probably want to look at taking M one or two. Or multiple. I was say I have a very standard rule when it comes to deck building, just a personal rule. I I'll always tech in a seven somewhere. Um even back in the Dorbic days when I was running Dorbic constantly, I was teching in an uh Augie Bond just to trash a security. Like I, I'm any of my decks I build, like any level seven, but definitely these four, if you're playing those colors, then it'd be it'd be numb of thought to not tech in at least two. Especially if it's dealing with stuff in the meta. Like mm -hmm. when I went to Gen Con last year, I was playing Flare and I had a Death X because people were throwing cards everywhere. And I'm like, all right, I'll play this for free. Thanks. I was like level seven, just give you that gotcha effect. Like uh, like watching the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. And he's like, oh, but you didn't think about my trap card. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> That's how I feel about every uh, ace, especially Mega Gargo, especially... I let them read all their effects. They go through all their attacks. And that is something I want to tell everyone right now. Even if your opponent gets mad, they have to go through their effects. Okay? Because there are some instances where it can change the game. They must finish all their win attacking effects. I know. Even me, myself, I hate going through, reading them all, and then they're like, I'm going to counter that. I'm going to blast Digivolve, and I'm like, <laughs> like, I just spent 10 minutes explaining everything. Uh, it's because it does affect the board state. It can, uh, maybe it will kill another Digimon. Like, it, it'll do different things, like if it plays out something, things like that. It's really important to finish it all because it can change the board state maybe you're able to swing through something and get piercing or anything like that so just remember guys even if your opponent looks perturbed and you're playing against rapidmon finish your win attacking effects and then go through because <laughs> it's not blocker timing but if you read all your win attack yeah if you read all your effects and then they do like the classic fix their glasses anime trope. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're fine. Then be mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. Got you now, Yugi. All right. And then we got one more. And this is kind of the splashable air quote uh, tamer and options to help encountering the meta. We got Kongua. Um. Until the end of your opponent's turn, your opponent's Digimon with play cost 7 or less can't attack players. And cards can't be added to the security stacks by your opponent's effects. Shut up, Vaccine. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> ha ha! It's like, what's Yellow Vaccine's weakness? The color black. <laughs> it's my weakness. <laughs> I, that card was splashed in, in so many, you know, black decks uh when it first dropped and i never thought about it until i think i was playing against alpha mon which i don't play anything that adds to security but it's like you what my play cost of seven or less that's it's a lot yeah it is it's a ton um and it's it's a two cost stun mm-hmm it uh, shuts down those Marcuses, shuts down mm -hmm. those Numamon, shuts down that yellow vaccine. It can hurt security control just as well. Uh, that's a whole lot for two mana. Or two memory. <laughs> mana memory. You know what I'm saying. <gasps> oh, yeah. oh, mana. Oh, God. Can't believe you said that on this podcast. <laughs> oh, God. Yep, can't wait to leave and just be like they were so unprofessional. They said mana. <laughs> How dare they? Yeah, no, I like I said, it's a, it's a two cost stunt. I don't want to say that's unheard of. Uh, obviously, there's other cards, sorta 
uh, like it. You see uh, a bit in blue. But the, the, to not add to the security stack is pretty large to any any yellow deck. Um, Shine Gray included, because doesn't the Marcus die and go to the top security? Um, if you have Rise Gray out, yes. Well, if you have the Inheritable Effect, which you probably do. Yes. Yes. Ha ha, Marcus. Got, got him. <laughs> I'll show you to punch me in the face. That was... Yeah, and I think that was a as much hate as that deck gets. I think a tamer swinging was just like a cool thing. Oh yeah. And then everyone started running that deck, and then it's like, oh, it's that fast. Like I was one of the first people I played against it. I lost in like a minute and a half, and I was like, so I'll be building that. I waited so long to play that deck, and then once it arrived, it was full power. I was like. Played it, I think, one or two locals, and I was like, yep, done with it. Not going to play it anymore. I don't like, uh, I'm not a very competitive person, so I don't like taking meta to locals. When I do go, I don't go to my locals that much, to be honest. Um, just because our locals is on a Sunday at 2 p.m. It's like, dude, football's on. Like, I have a big family. Like, Sunday dinner, but yada yada. But, um, I did, I did take it once. And I didn't know how to pilot it correctly, uh, so I didn't end up winning. But I, like a couple of games, I did play and, and win. I was just like, "Oh, yeah, I see why I disliked this." And that was back when people ran the the ruin mode in it before um, we uh, got the level seven, the burst the mode. burst modes. Yep, it was gross yeah. both ways. They were just running the ruin mode. It's like <laughs> <laughs> terrible deck, cancer. Yeah. And, <laughs> that was a. I made a TikTok about this. I talked about this uh, in both discords, mine and your guys'. Uh, I just don't think certain cards deserve or need an ace, and that was one of them. And I was like, "What? What do you guys do? Like, Panda? What are you thinking? <laughs> Why are you giving this more stuff to piss me off?" I don't like to like talk like nerdy stuff with my wife, but I'm like, "There's somebody my age in that office right now that's like, you know, would piss off a bunch of people." <laughs> Shine gray ace. <laughs> why and it it was one of those things i tell my wife too it's uh when you bring out cards like that or like op decks or cards that make decks overpowered and fast that's when the whole digimon is dying yes. stuff starts and then the people i don't want to disrespect anybody but there's a lot of people that when it comes to card games or hobbies in general, don't think for themselves and they just follow that big streamer, that big YouTuber. And they're just like, oh, so-and-so said it's dying. It must be dying. I'm getting out of the game. And then a month later, they upload a YouTube video of them playing the game. And it's like, oh, I sold my collection for you. Like, Yes. And, and I think that's one of the biggest issues with the Pokemon, Magic, the big three card games. There's so many content creators that it balances it out. With Digimon, we've got, you know, everybody probably watches Avald. Probably, you know, a fan favorite. Love them. Yeah. Um, we've got Mario. We've got Primitive Kage. We've got quite a few people. Well, Primitive was the one. He just got out of it. He just said, you know, I'm done with it. We're just going to go ahead and scoop it. And now he's back. I mean, you know, just throw that out yeah. there. <laughs> He was one that was like, yep, I'm done with Digimon. To, to a point, um, I can understand if you're not having fun. Yeah. If, you, if you're not having fun, that, that's fine. Um, I, I think I made this comment earlier, and this is, like, no one did this. I just, it was becoming a thing. I could see it coming where bigger content creators were going to start making 15-minute video essays about why Digimon is dying. And it's like... It, it was never dying. No. Like, you guys just enjoyed One Piece better. Yes. This one didn't die because you went to go play One Piece. It didn't die because you went to go play BSS. It's not going to die because you go play Union Arena. Um, I don't think anything will kill the game other than Bandai and the player base itself. Because uh, I think Digimon itself is one of the better communities. Yeah. 
but if Bandai puts out these OP cards, that's when communities become toxic, and that's when people stop wanting to be part of that community. And I think, you know, right now, like Drew mentioned it, it kind of the beginning was we're not in a rock, paper, scissors meta right now. You know, all these decks, you were seeing two, three, five of in tops. You know, one of Beelzemon just topped. So, I mean, uh, it's definitely, mm -hmm. you know, how your matchups go and everything. And I think they're going to see coming into BT16, if you've played anyone that's playing in advanced of these cards, you see how <laughs> powerful armor is, how powerful mass demonia is. And we're like, and we'll hear the same argument. When we go into a rock, paper, scissors minute, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, it's the same. Just like when Melga was topping, it's the same deck over. It's it's just a, it's just a wheel. Like, uh, like you said, I totally agree with, um, uh, if you're not part of the community or you're not really involved in it, it seems like it's dying. You know, it would be like if you never watch football or soccer or, uh, if you never play a certain video game, you're like, oh, that community's dead. Um, now there's some games like BSS that is on the rocks. Like that ship is that ship is crashing. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I mean, there's there's nothing as of right now, uh, and I think that's Bandai's fault, highly because they hyped it up so much and had these huge expectations, and then they just dropped the ball. So I blame that on Bandai, not so much the community, because I talked all the boys into getting some BSS. <laughs> and then the ship sunk I, shortly after. Two weeks later, the ship sunk, so that yeah. was unfortunate. Sorry, boys. I, I, went to, I went to the preview event, and uh, I had left. I'd, the, the, the Bandai rent was running a little late. Uh, I couldn't stay any later, so I was like, well, I'm going to go home. And uh, I showed up, that was a Saturday, I showed up Sunday to Locals, and uh, the guy that runs the shop, he's like, as soon as that band guy, and the guy left, he's like, I took a vote, and everyone voted, we're not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, good. But it, I don't know, I, I, like, again, I didn't do the preview event, so I don't even know how to play the game, but, like, you had a group of 15, maybe 20 nerds, and you couldn't sell them on a cardboard picture yeah probably speaks uh highly of uh either gameplay or design and i think this was the third time bss has come to the west yeah battle spirits then battle spirits saga and uh which a lot of card games dragon ball super i it is crazy because you know i've dabbled in dragon ball super but that's one of those card games it's doesn't do well in our area but then you'll go to a Bandai event where they've got One Piece, Digimon, and Dragon Ball Super, and you look over and there's three to four hundred Dragon Ball Super players, and you're like, "Well, I mean, it's not dead, clearly." But for in our area, it is. It's hard to get five people to show up, you know. So, is it? We're we're. I don't want to say I live in like a busy. We're, I don't live in a busy part of my state uh it is busier but like i said we're 40 minutes from cleveland um but i think just my area is one of the the biggest bandwagon areas to where when new games drop like everyone in this part of northeast ohio is like get stock immediately <laughs> let's like i said earlier every saturday i go to the comic book shop and he's right now the list of pokemon stuff to get and he's like if we don't get it now we won't get it it's like really yeah it carries a lot of digimon it carries some digimon i, I didn't want to say a lot it carries some digimon but like he doesn't and rightfully so he's a comic book shop but he just doesn't care about the game like you'll walk in there and be like hey do you, did you have any of the double typhoon starter decks he's like meh didn't fit allocation this month it's like oh okay i get it you're a comic book shop but then like people at uh around here be like i can't find digimon the game's dying and it's like it's dying dragon ball just dropped people are hype on that one piece op06 was huge yes. it just dropped yes 
And and format, like you said, formats go up and down a lot. What were you about to say, Tiny Thun? I was going to say, uh, I think a lot of the reason that Digimon's had people saying, oh, Digimon's dying multiple times over the last year and a half, um, it's poor timing. These new card games are coming out at a time whenever people are deep into a meta and they're still waiting for new cards to come out. And so they take a break from Digimon to go play the new card game while Digimon is at a low point. And everybody thinks the game died because content creators and people at their locals have branched out to something else at the same time. But then a month later, like we said before, they come back and they're playing Digimon again like nothing changed because it didn't. Sometimes people just have to take a break. And the competitive scene affects yep, a lot of it. You just gotta step away. Yeah, but competitive scene affects a lot too. I think, uh, you know, we experience it. There's a, One Piece is big in our area. Pokemon is huge. Magic is still a pretty big thing. Yu-Gi-Oh is massive. So, um, and t- I think the store regionals are going to help a ton. Well, that's just my prediction. That's not a fact. I just think it will help the having those competitive natures, just like Pokemon has um, their little championships and they have their, what are they called? Why did my mind go blank? Uh, but you know, once, once a month they have a Pokemon event to where you can go and play. Um, and it's better than locals. You get more points and everything. So yeah. Digimon's definitely not dying. Kind of like what Digimon does with store championships. Yeah, that that that's why I'm really hoping that store regionals will bring another big boost. I sadly think that a lot of people are not going to get into store regionals. I actually had a dream that we didn't get into store regionals, and I was very upset. That's how much I've been thinking about it. I had a dream about it. A fucking dream about it. I was like, I don't know. We didn't get store regionals. <laughs> I think a lot of that comes down to a... <laughs> I think a lot of that comes down to, especially with Digimon um, media. Yeah. Uh, so I think Liberators is going to be like a breath of fresh air. Yes. Super pumped. I think, I think Liberator, I think they've lined Liberator up right when they start the, the merge. So we'll have a new set every like month and they're going to have Liberator just promoting the crap out of all these new sets. And they're gonna pump it up, and then starting next year, it's gonna be booming. Because oh, right now, everybody's complaining oh, the game is dying, is because we're in a stretch of BT fifteen until the end of May, when BT sixteen drops. I don't think there's an EX set dropping before that. No, right? no, it's the EX six comes out after. Mm-hmm. So we've got until the end of May in the BT fifteen format. And people are complaining because they're already bored with it. So they're going to start playing other card games. Oh, just wait. But once we start getting a new set every month, yeah. people are going to be complaining about, yes. oh, we're getting too much stuff. We're getting yeah. too much stuff. I can't keep up. And Buy your singles, people. I think that's, yeah. like I said earlier, I think <laughs> I think that's why the merge is going to be so cool. Um, because when we do get into this long format, there's so much deck building you could do. Because we don't have a ton of information decks out. Yeah. Like, net decking is still going to be a big thing. It's going to be a brand new, not a brand new world, but a, such a different world for the Digimon TCG because it's not going to be as easy to net deck. So, yeah, your BT 15s long. So, build something else and play for fun. Well, and like I, I say it all the time, I don't understand. Well, no, go ahead and finish your thought. I was going to just mention something else, but go ahead. When we look at long formats and people are worried about regionals and alti cups and these big tournaments, there's nothing stopping you from joining a small Discord tournament and and playing a fun deck and having fun and and playing something no one's seen. Somebody just played a Wormmon deck uh, the other day in a Discord local, like just based Wormmon, no... No Watch your staying, baby. Yeah, I was like, that. what? I'm just looking forward to... I like that kind of stuff, though. Yeah, well, and like we said, rock, paper, scissors formats may be cool for 
countering them, learning your matchups because there's not as many matchups. But this makes it good for us smaller content creators. There's so many decks to cover, and I think we're going to start seeing a new type of video come out. I was talking to Tiny about it a little bit before we jumped in here. Uh, there's done a person, uh, shout out, Spidey Plays. I think he's a cool dude. I like his videos. Stumbled upon him a couple of months ago. He's now making videos instead of uh, learning how to build a deck, you learn how to play against that specific deck. He's coming out with videos that show how to counter that. This was a good, this was a cool topic because Drew thought of it. Literally, I think his video came out today and Drew was done I, talking about I, this. I sent you guys the message. I sent you guys the message and then I was scrolling through the Facebook uh, group and then I seen his post and I'm like, what? Yeah, because <laughs> now now is a good time. He, po he posted the, yeah, he posted the Rapid Mon. I don't know when he posted it, but I saw it today after I'd mentioned this. And then uh, he just dropped a Sean Gray video. It's just good because we've talked about it forever. I've tried to do it with Pokemon, and it's very hard to do with Pokemon. But that's when I would do my build videos. I think my Bill Star video that I did was one of our biggest hits. Is because it's cool because I gave why I put these cards in and what they match up well against. Like, you can't just throw all the seven cost options or why you run more Kakatis Breath over, you know, Rivals Barrage or anything like that. I think the merge is going to make it a lot more fun for us smaller content creators to create content for it because it's just this wide open field that we can do stuff. I'm excited. My One of my favorite hobbies is because I don't get to play a lot. I just open Digimon IO and then <laughs> scroll through the decks that have been posted and just click on them. Oh, what's this? What's this? That's new. Oh, yeah. Because there's always something different getting posted on IO where people want to try to build something new. Coolest part about, and not just Digimon, it's the coolest part about a any card game is you don't have to build the deck that that big content creator has or the the YouTube video that says undefeated one piece of Luffy red purple deck. Yeah. You don't gotta build that. Like you can build your own and you might be just as successful as that undefeated deck. Exactly. If everyone is following the cookie cutter format, how do we know if this deck doesn't work? We don't know if Gabu Bond can't thrive if we don't play Gabu Bond. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly when i get that win with my boy her <laughs> animal on well that's when we'll we'll showcase it i want to see it i want to see it happen i want to see tyranno take a regional or just place i would love to see you win what's her but yeah make make a top 16 people would have their minds blown hey it can happen look like the these decks become popular due off their success. Content creators like if they do well, like you know, why why should you listen to the Digipod or why should you listen to the Cataclysmic Gamers or whoever? You know, or just dudes and guys and gals like everyone else. It's just I think that validates you more. So for instance, People have dabbled. Andrew's not the only Tyrannomon fanboy. Trust me. Anytime he makes a post about Tyrannomon, people's like, hey, other salvate. I need this deck list. Is it tier one? <laughs> Be hey, brave. Pe Go pe Eosmon. 50 card yeah, People Eosmon. like their favorite Digimon and they want to play that deck. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing. Some people are playing just because they love this Digimon line and they want to play that list. Or they want to build something based on it. That's why I think I love Digi Guys' choice That's to play Metal Gore. I for um, love Melga. Uh, my bro, my my older brother, he is. He didn't like watch Digimon as a kid, but we, we he got in the card game right around the time time I did. And he just loves Gomamon. So BT14 giving him Goma support, like 
the pure joy he had of just playing Goemon as a deck, like a a decent deck too. But it's like that's good. That's what the game is. You you, you either pick a favorite Digimon or a favorite Digimon is picked for you, and then you build that. And then you get to play with that, and you get to ogle at all the, the cool art that he's featured in, uh, which I think Goma has one of the best all arts, um, like art-wise, like style-wise. I think that BT-14 alt Goma is beautiful. But it's also his favorite, so it means a lot to see. Not so much him, because he's 31. It's like, that's weird, dude. Stop looking at that card like that. But like, children. <laughs> they look cool. Like, <laughs> my nephew loves Pokemon, so like when he it, it's just cool to see him. He loves Char, Charizard. It's so do every other kid. But when he pulls like the cool alts of Charizard, it's like his eyes light up and he's like, oh. It's like, all right, that's what it's about. Not tier one mirror match going into round eight to top 16. Like, we're supposed although, to be having fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, watch. Someone's going to lose at the next regional. And be like, those cataclysmic cardboard guys told me not to play meta. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, that's why I love Gammon so much. Is I? It's one of those decks that <clears throat> some larger YouTubers said sucks, and I do not think the deck sucks. Because when you can ask Jordan. When I when it clicked in my brain why the new Cano Vicemon is better than the Sec Plus One, I was like, and the Digimon Digivolution riff went off in my head, and I was like, this is it. This is what. <laughs> this is the way the deck's supposed to work. You just hear that sick guitar riff. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do like a. Uh... The uh, Frontiers Digivolution, seeing all your clothes yeah. pop up, you're just as the card forms around you. <laughs> I'm levitating. That's that's the, like Bill Star. I'll never let that deck yeah. die. I won't. I won't let Bill Star Mon die <laughs> ever. Well, this Which is, is weird because you want the deck to die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, very true. It's, very true. It's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Mega Sweaty's got your back on that too. He's he's not gonna let it die. It's a good deck. Believe me, he's played it at like three regionals. He loves it. <laughs> well, if you guys don't have anything else, did you guy tell us where you're at, where they can find you, plug your Discord? Uh, uh, did you guy? Uh, we're just now getting started on YouTube. I'll be posting more for the TCG Jungle, which is also the name of our Discord. Um, there's a lot of playtesting that goes on in there, and then. I try to do it every month. We do a monthly challenge. This month, we invited your guys' Discord to uh, join in on that. If you play in the Discord, either one, and you win, you can record that as a point. Uh, and then whoever has the most points at the end of April gets a box of the newest set. Um, and I don't, you know, no one ever waits on me. I feel like I always have to give this disclaimer. If you win the box, don't wait on me. Just find a box and send me the price, and I will cash app you the money. Um, that's genius. Besides that, that's it. TikTok. Yeah. So we did a, a tournament a while ago, and the person that won, his area gets boxes like way before I do. And at the time, I wasn't going to pre-releases, so I was like, "Dude, I'll just shoot you ninety-five dollars. We'll call it even." <laughs> Man, that's actually. So yeah, monthly challenge. We do it in the TCG TCG Jungle uh, Discord. You guys are invited uh, in your Discord, so if you play in either one and win, record it, DM me, I'll give you your point. Whoever has the most points wins a box. And besides that, the old cap cut and TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll link a I'll link an invite to your Discord uh, in the description so everybody can hop in there and jump in on those April points. Yeah, we try to do it every month. Uh when I first got into Digimon, boxes were sixty bucks. Now they're up there, so like every other month we do one. So April is the month, and then next would be uh, end of May. We'll start another one. Sweet. All right. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, Tony, get us out of here. This has been another exciting episode of the Security Check Digimon TCG podcast. 
did you got it was great to have you on thank you thank you guys for having me on i appreciate it and thank all you out there for listening stay safe have fun and we'll catch you next time